Welcome everyone to another episode of Speedrunning SC2 because the last episode was so much fun with Terran I decided to do another Terran episode. Next episode we'll go back to random but for now we're gonna dominate with Terran in six minutes. Let's begin. First game is against a Terran. Now for today I was planning to actually do a lot of weird cheeses. I'm trying to think of what cheese I can use to beat a Terran pretty fast uh, because you know I would love to go for like Thor Battlecruiser but with Thor Battlecruiser you just can't kill someone in six minutes right so unless I do a Thor Battlecruiser SEV pool hmm let's see I want to do something crazy anyway now it is against Terran against Terran the most Typical cheeses would be like very fast proxy, so a proxy tour T Rex Reaper, a proxy Marauder. I'm more thinking something like a proxy Thor, for example. Proxy Battlecruiser, I would love to do it, but realistically, you can't really kill a Terran player with that. You can do damage, you can get ahead for sure, but killing someone with a fast Battlecruiser, probably not gonna happen. But I am very tempted to go for the proxy Thor. I think I already did the one base Thor drop. I did a Thor cheese against Zerg and against Protoss. And I'm having so much fun with the Thor cheeses. So I think I'm just going to go for it once again here against this Terran. Now I want to build it a little bit closer to his base. I remember the really crazy proxy Thor I did. But I just remembered which one it was that I was thinking of. It was... Um, I think it was the planetary rush against Protoss. Where I went for proxy armory with a mine drops and then went for Thor as well and somehow it worked. I think that's what happened. Uh, at least, I just remember my planetary dying pretty fast and then a freaking super late Thor walking in and clutching up the situation. So uh, that is probably the guy I was thinking about and I'm going to try to recreate a similar amount of magic here. Now it's always scary against Terran when you go for a proxy factory because you won't have Hellions at home. Looks like my opponent is... Yeah, okay. I was I was just checking where the SCV was going. I wanted to make sure he wasn't going to expand really fast, for example. But it seems like we're doing the same build. We're going for a double gas here. Now, obviously, my build is going to be slightly different than his with me building a factory over here. But he doesn't have to know that, guys. It's all good. Hopefully, the Reaper doesn't scout this, though. That would be a little bit tragic. Now, the next step of my build is to make sure I can deny the SCV. So... Sometimes what Terrans will do in TVT is they'll send an SCV with a Reaper. They'll try to delay your natural. And in my case, they wouldn't delay it, but they would scout that there is no natural and that's a problem. Now the Reaper jump up cliff on this map is not that good. It's very narrow and it's a double jump. So I probably don't have to be afraid of him YOLOing in there, but I guess you never know. Maybe I should make a depot there preemptively uh, just to get a scout on at least. Like you have to keep in mind this strategy it has a lot of holes in it because I can technically not deny a scout perfectly. And the reason for that is that if he scouts the main, he will see there's no factory. Uh, if he scouts this or this, he will also have a similar amount of useful information. So what I'm hoping for here is that he just scouts where my reapers are so I can deny it. I do not want him to get into the main. I do not want him... Oh, I had a few SCVs AFK here. I do not want him to scout this. Um, and even now, I'll probably have to abandon the natural. I could actually go for a YOLO. Uh, no, I think it's, it's not worth it. So what I was planning to do here is send my Reapers into his main base with the purpose of distracting him and pulling him back home. But since I don't have any units here, that means if he would jump into my main, he would just kill everything with two Reapers, which is a little bit of a sad way to, uh, you know, lose out on this epic cheese over here. So I'm going to refrain from doing that. And my armory is about to finish. Or is going to spawn. I do kind of wish I made this reactor faster. Like these two Reapers haven't proved particularly useful. And I could have had a few more Marines with my Thor push. Which would have been nice. But I guess we'll see. Uh, it all depends on what my opponent's going to do. If he's trying to attack me with a tank push. And I fly my Thor in his base at the same time. Maybe it's still all going to work out perfectly. So who knows. I do have this SCV. Um, 20 more seconds on the Thor. I think it's time for me to pull the boys. There we go. 10 SCVs. Is that going to be enough? Probably. Now in TVT, actually I do remember doing something similar to this where it was scary because the moment I remember is that I wanted to avoid running into Reaper Hellion in the middle of the map because I don't really have anything I can do against Reaper Hellion. Now I probably shouldn't go in with that one. Let's see what he has over here, all right. He's going for Banshee Cyclone. Okay, very interesting. Uh, at least it looks like it's Banshee Cyclone. Wow, those are just getting one shot. Wait, what units is he building exactly? I can just dodge the lock-ons with this. He's losing everything to just my one Thor. Uh, do I even need the rest of my units, guys? I'm not convinced. Do I need the rest of my units here? I'm actually not quite sure. Oh, I can drop on top of the Cyclone. The Cyclone's gonna die. And I have literally killed him without my SCVs. 
without my units, I beat him with a single Thor. Okay, that is absolute insanity. Uh, I was expecting a Banshee to hit my base or something, but I guess there you go, guys. 441. The Thor has, I want to say, undoubtedly been the best unit of this entire speedrunning challenge because every time I do something with the Thor, they just die. Anyway, fantastic War Rope game. Let's go for game number two. All right, game number two against a Zerg. Should we just make this the Thor episode? Well, actually, wait, I remember a strategy that I wanted to do at some point that I didn't really get to execute. Um, how did that game go? You guys might remember this better than I do. Nor normally, I remember like all the games I play. You guys know my memory is quite good when it comes to uh, the YouTube games. But I, at some point, I played a game against a Zerg where I went for a proxy battlecruiser. But I couldn't execute it because he was cheesing me and he lost before the battle cruiser came out, I think. Um, I feel like this was a time when I got proxy hatch or something and my opponent mixed up the builds. I'm trying to remember what map it was. Um, I want to say it was on Waterfall, even. Uh, I, think my, I guess my memory is serving me pretty well, at least if I'm right. Anyway, I would love to try that kind of strategy again. This map does seem pretty good for it too, you know? Looking at the minimap here. I do forget what these maps are called all the time, by the way. Okay, so this one is Royal Blood. Let's try to remember that one. So, I can proxy a starboard here. Well, actually, an Overlord might see it there. But the main access is insane. How can I do this build, though? So, I'm going to tell you guys my plan, okay? I used to have a build uh, that I used in pro play a few times. And this build actually was not particularly effective, but I liked it. And it's that I went for a proxy starport Hellion drop. So the medevac is really fast. And then go into a battlecruiser. And then just play a macro bio game from there. But what I was thinking of doing for my speedrunning episodes was do a similar build. I go for a proxy Hellion drop. Ideally keep the Hellions alive in this case. I mean, if, if I can kill all this Jones, I'll go for it, of course. But ideally keep the Hellions alive. And then... Go for a hell battle in after the BC with a bunch of Marines as well. And it sounds kind of strong, but sometimes the timings don't quite work out. Like, it's possible that this just hits after they already have nine queens and then your battlecruiser or hell battle are not really going to be doing that much, right? So, I guess we're going to see how it pays off. I did an economic version of the build with the Marine first. Typically, you would go for a gas first and make a Reaper. But here, I think this is the most economic, so it's also going to be the best choice here. This map does have an Overlord Pillar, sadly, so it's going to be able to hide. Looks like a hatch first to me. And then I'm just going to back out. Now, I saw the Overlord somewhere here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to faint that I'm going back. He's going to... Exactly, here's the Overlord. He's going to see my SCV going back. And then I'll kind of juke it and go all the way here. Now, I think this might be a little bit too close for the starport because they're going to put an Overlord here to get vision over the, the airspace, right? So I think I'll put it down here. That seems like a little bit safer. I don't need to be afraid of Zerglings. Zerglings are going to show up at some point, which is a little bit scary. Um, thought I heard something in the background there. <laughs> Just should check it to make sure. Actually, I could have checked the webcam here. All right, let's get that thing floated over. And then I'm going to make a starport air with space for a tech lab. There's actually a tip I always give to my students in coaching uh, that I can give you guys as well. When you make buildings as Terran... It's so much easier if you already build it with space for an add-on. Like, one of the hardest things to do in Terran Macro is switching add-ons on your buildings. Because it takes so much action uh, for, yeah, something very small. And you're going to spend way too much time doing it. So, you always want to make sure you build your buildings like this. Where the tech lab, you can already build it without looking at it, basically. That is the idea here. I'm going to go for all the Zerglings. I should be able to get all of them. And actually, here it's important. Because if I don't get all the Zerglings, he could see my proxy. Which would be uh, an absolute tragedy. So all the Zerglings go down. That is being built. And now I'm going to switch over to... Or not switch over. I just have to make a fusion core, basically. And I'll make it all the way down there to be safe. Going to send my Hellions out. Now, I do need to keep in mind... Normally, you go for pure damage... Here, I actually kind of need to keep them alive so I can hit them up with the battlecruiser, right? Or link them up with the battlecruiser when uh, the armory finishes. Should I make another... I feel like I need another gas for a battlecruiser plus an armory. It does sound a bit crazy to go for three gases just for that. Now, let's see what he has back at home. There's no overlord here. You forgot to park an overlord in this space. This should do an absolutely massive amount of damage. Yeah, this is going to be super painful. I can't believe he forgot that overlord, guys. That is absolutely crucial. And he's going to lose so many workers before the links even get there. Now, I did miss target fire a little bit, so that's nice for him. Uh, but yeah, this is just a crazy amount of drones to lose. Did he... Did he make Zerglings? I didn't see any Zerglings there at all. Where are the Zerglings, my man? Is he doing a weird build where maybe he walled off with a gasless... Oh, I forgot I need to save these. Can I save them? No. Okay. 
fine then i'll just go for this well that's a mistake by me like i said uh, i really needed these alive and i could have killed way more drones not convinced i did the best job there i should have killed way more i'm not gonna lie guys that was not a beautiful execution by me but that's okay we all make mistakes let's get one more no we can't okay so we lost four hellions we did do a really good amount of damage for it but we lost the medevac uh, as well as the hell why did i send that worker back guys that is not smart. Uh, that overlord is right there, by the way. That overlord just saw that SUV come back if he was paying any attention. Okay, well, mistakes are being made, which I guess makes this more exciting. And if we're looking at the clock here, guys, 5 minutes and 11 seconds have passed. That means that we're going to have to SUV pool with this, uh, which is going to be pretty exciting, of course. It is going to be pretty exciting, but it's also weird. An SUV pool against Zerg. Can you imagine what bailings would do to my poor workers? Let's see. He doesn't have a spore. Oh, guys, I think this is going to be brutal for him. Uh, without a spore crawler, I'm not sure how he's supposed to defend this, really. If he doesn't have a spore there, he probably doesn't have a spore in the main. And I think we are playing against a very greedy Zerg player. I'm just going to teleport it in. I was planning to fly it. There's no spore. He, he might leave here. I'm not saying it's completely over, but he might leave because this is horribly frustrating to deal with that without a spore crawler. Uh, he oh, he does have one spore. Okay, that is good for him. But I don't think it's going to be enough. He's splitting the queens. These queens are being fried. It's time to pull the workers here because it's six minutes. Oh, I need to split those. Wasn't paying enough attention there. But I just don't think he has enough stuff here, guys. He has one more bailing available. Not the best micro by me, I'll be honest. But I feel like we've just won with the strategy. Nothingness was a very greedy Zerg in many ways. I killed 23 workers. Think about this. I killed 23 workers and he still had 52. He made 75 workers without really making any units. Um, and that is even, you know, not counting the buildings that the drones transferred into. This strategy was really cool. I want to use it again, but this Zerg was just too greedy. Like I said, I'll be honest, guys. I didn't play that well. I made a lot of mistakes, but he was so greedy, didn't have anything, didn't pay attention to his overlord. And I think we got unlucky here because this could have been a tough one, but this is definitely a strategy I want to try again. But for now, let's go to game number three. Oh, we got a Protoss and we didn't just get a normal Protoss. We're playing against Harstam, I believe. Now, what crazy cheese can we do against Harstam that can actually work? That is the question. I'm kind of tempted to go for uh, a one-based Thor as well. What did we do in the last game? Battlecruiser? Yeah, so we're going to go for Thor, Battlecruiser, Thor. That sounds all right to me. Wait, this, does this ramp... Was this ramp looks really wide for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's normal, but it looks really wide. I'm not sure what creates that effect. Now, one thing that's scary, guys, is that uh, when you play Hearthstone on the ladder, he's most likely streaming, which means his chat is now full of uh, people telling him that this is me. So, <laughs> you know, he probably is going to take my name a little bit more serious and indeed not trust me. Um, but that's okay. Maybe uh, he's going to mind game himself. Maybe my Thors are going to work out. I do think the one base Thor cheese against Protoss is pretty decent. In fact, funny story is that uh, I started doing this Thor cheese, I want to say a few months ago. I did it once in an ESL Cup in one of my challenges. I did it once in uh, speedrunning SC2, actually. And the video I copied the build one was actually built from was actually Bunny doing it against Harstam. So I guess uh, he's pretty familiar with the build, but it did work against him before. So who knows, maybe it'll work again. Obviously, uh, you know, Bunny is a very good Terran. So we're just going to have to see if I can match that same level. Now, my build so far, you would think it looks crazy, right? If you look at my base, I have two gases. I, uh, yeah, I'm clearly doing an all-in, you would think. But double gas actually pretty standard against Protoss to him. This is not going to look so crazy. The thing I'm scared of is I would like to wall this off fast, but I don't want him to see that I'm still mining gas, basically. I would love for him to leave, and then I'll just put down the depot after. And this is mainly for the mine games. Like, normally... You know, you just wall off and kill the probe fast. Here, I just want to make sure he doesn't realize I'm still mining gas. Standard double gas, what you do is you start the factory. You take one SCV out of this one, put it on the minerals, and one SCV out of this one. And that's exactly what I don't want him to see. Because high-level players, they always pick up those really small details. And that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly what you don't want. Now, I did forget exactly how Bunny did this build. It's possible he made a second Reaper. I think he went for a straight reactor, though. So now I'm just going to be looking around for his pro, see if we can find it. Undoubtedly, he would like to come back and get a follow-up scout on this. That's what I'm checking for right now. But there is a little place. This is Royal Blood again, by the way, right? Yeah, there's a little places to hide on this map. If you're looking at it, this looks kind of crazy. You can not really find a probe that easily. A probe could be here or on this side or on this side. That is not easy to find. It's probably smarter for me to just camp in front of my natural and wait for the probe to come in. 
The rough thing is that he's going to scout. I have no natural, and that's going to make it uh, a little bit more complicated. Let's do a secondary scout. I'm also going to put my mine here uh, in hopes to catch an adept. That's what this mine is going to be for. Let's see if I can dodge the probe with that one as well. And I'm going to put it relatively far forward so he doesn't dodge it with his shade. Like most commonly... Oh, I should have sent this Reaper across actually after a while. I forgot about that. Um, usually what they do is they'll shade until like this area. And then there's a bunker here. And then they wait to shade past the bunker. Now here there is obviously, uh, you know, no bunker. So uh, I don't want him to be able to get into my natural that easily. I want to give the mine a shot of killing the adept at least. I do think I make... Oh, there's actually two adepts here. Ah, oh, that sucks for us. Two adepts also means it's very likely Stargate, which is very good against this style. And the main reason for that is that a Stargate allows you to scout it the fastest. So an Oracle or Phoenix flying into your base is going to see what you're doing instantly. Uh, and that is pretty, pretty rough. I did make my... Wait, is this... Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is pretty much game over, I think, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm still going to try, of course. But the Phoenix scouting the Medivac usually uh, is a pretty big death sentence. Now, if he doesn't scout my base... I, I really thought he was going to check my base. If he doesn't scout my base and doesn't see the Thor coming, that is actually a different story. I'm going to have to burrow these mines here. This is all to buy time. Like, there's there's nothing I can do with this. Uh, I'm just buying time here. Uh, I'm going to put another Widow Mine over here. And then just kind of wait it out. I do have a lot of SCVs building. He might not necessarily expect my Thor follow-up, right? So we're just going to have to wait and see. There we go. He's double checking to see if I'm still there. Uh, and I am, in fact, still here. I'm going to pull 10 SCVs. And then we're just going to go for it. I mean, I'm just chilling. I'm, I'm never going to move those mines again until I notice the phoenixes are uh, somewhere else. So let's go with this Thor. Now, I thought it was completely game over, but he actually has not checked for my Thor push. Um, so he might not necessarily have the tools. Normally what they do is they'll make a void ray and the void ray just shuts down the Thor too much. They'll have batteries and stuff, right? But here, uh, he doesn't actually seem to have those. So I'm just going to link up here with all of my units and then see what I can do here. He does have a battery ready. That's unfortunate. I'm going to burrow those mines a little bit more strategic. Let's try to get in range. Okay, so he's making batteries now. He's making an immortal, which is pretty terrifying. Wait, that pylon might actually die if he's not paying attention to it. Yeah, the pylon is going to go down. Let's try to get a little bit more in range. It's probably going to activate the battery now if I had to guess. The widow mines are actually a little bit painful there in that location. So he activated the super battery. Let's try to get the mines a little bit closer so they can actually deal some damage. Another adept goes down, which is beautiful. The Thor is really not dying to anything here, which is insane. Okay, let's see. Do I have enough units? Yeah, the super battery is just healing those units until infinity. He has a second immortal out now. And that means it's probably going to be it for this attack, I would have to guess. Um, and it does actually make me wonder if he realized I was coming. Or if he did it reactively still. But yeah, there should not be any more chances to win this game. I do have one more Thor on the way, which I guess could make a small difference. Let's go. Let's see if the Thor does make a difference here. Okay. Oh, we can actually try to attack this. Thors do do a lot of damage. Should I pull a few more SCVs? Oh, it's six minutes already, actually. So we're going to go with the final attack here. Let's pull the last boys. You know, I do have a third tour, which could make a big difference. Let's see. Can we... Wait, what, what did that mine shoot? Did you guys see that? I thought it was going to shoot the Phoenix, but then the Phoenix showed up at full health. That was, that was very strange. I have no idea what happened there. All right, the final attack. Let's freaking go. I hope he doesn't have three Immortals. Oh, he does have three Immortals. That's terrifying. Can we kill one? Oh, we almost bursted that one down. That would have been beautiful. Okay, I mean, I do have a third tour. Let's see if I can fly it across the map uh, instantly. I do have a bunch of SCVs. Wait, is that... Oh, that's an observer. Okay, for a second, I thought it was a stasis. I was like, oh, you know, if he only has immortals, maybe we can actually burst them down. He does not have a super battery, it appears. Okay, let's try to kill that one. I, I need my third tour here instantly. Okay, come on. Can I kill that freaking Void Ray? Void Ray and Immortals are like the biggest enemies of these units. You see how much damage the Immortals are doing? And there we go. GG. It was a good attempt. But in the end, uh, as soon as he found my Medivac, I told you guys it was pretty much game over. Let me just make sure um, what he saw my attack with. I think he might have just uh, reacted to the SCV he saw. So he made a blind battery. 
And then he also made a blind second battery. All right. I think there's a decent chance he was just aware of who we were. Because this second battery doesn't make a particular amount of sense unless he was just too scared, you know. It's possible that he was too scared. Usually they don't make a second battery. So I think he had some pre-knowledge there. Probably from Twitch, yeah, to be honest, that he made a second battery blindly. Uh, personally, I thought it was this probe. If you look at this probe... It's going to run into my army. Um, I thought this probe was what tipped him off, but he was already making extra batteries. He had, I think, two gateways, right? Yeah, he had two gateways and a robot was playing super safe. And still, I think it was relatively close. Maybe if the first fight went a little bit better, we had a chance. Uh, but yeah, well done by him. And that's going to be it for today's episode. We went Thor's NPCs. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I think it was really fun, actually. Really fun to play with these units and do chases with them as well. I did SCP pull, SCP pull six seconds late this game, 606. So that's on me. But I lost anyway, so it's all good. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.